in this part of the video lesson, as we go further into working with imaginary numbers, we have left out the operation of division. The previous video worked with adding, subtracting, multiplying, even simplifying radicals. The second part of the lesson deals with division. And the reason why we separate this lesson is because when you're dividing with radicals, dealing with imaginary numbers, you want to make sure that you remember this idea of conjugates. And so you're dealing with imaginary numbers, you have complex conjugates. So if you can remember back when you dealt with simplifying radicals, operation with radicals back in Algebra 2, you know, the conjugate is going to be the same terms. So I have A radical B and C radical D. So the same terms, except we use the opposite operation. So instead of a plus sign, we'll use a minus sign. So the conjugate for A radical B plus C radical D is A radical B minus C radical D, and vice versa. The conjugate of the minus is the one with the plus sign. Same terms, opposite operation, which means if we take this idea of a conjugate to imaginary numbers, if you have A plus BI, the conjugate is going to be A minus BI, and vice versa. If you have A minus BI, you are going to have a plus bi as a conjugate. Now you may ask, what's the reasoning for this? The reasoning for this is what happens is if you multiply a complex conjugate by, when well, multiply a, a complex conjugate together, you are going to get a unique answer. Let's take a look at what happens. If we multiply a plus bi times a minus bi, you would distribute. a times a is a squared. A times negative bi is negative a b i. A times positive bi is positive a b i. And you get bi times negative bi is negative b squared i squared. So look what happens. You know, negative a b i plus b, a b i, they cancel. The middle terms cancel. You're left with a squared. And check this out. You know, i squared is negative 1. So you have negative b squared times negative 1, which is a positive b squared. So here's the cool thing, is if you multiply a complex number by its conjugate, you actually get a real number. That's why we use it, is it allows us to work with imaginary numbers. The imaginary numbers will become real now, and we can do all of our operations with them. We can simplify them. And so that's the key with complex conjugates. The reason why we learn them, we use them, it allows us to create real numbers from them. And we'll see why that works and how that's helpful. So we have to understand by multiplying a complex number by its conjugate, you actually eliminate the imaginary numbers and you only deal with the real ones. So let's take a look at some basic ones involving this first. Complex conjugates, multiply them together. And so again, I'm gonna call it distribute. You wanna call it FOIL, go ahead, but I like to refer to it as the distributive property. So 15 gets distributed 15, and 15 goes to negative three i. So 15 and 15 is 225. You know, negative 3 times 15 is negative 45. And then I do the same thing, 3i and 15, and 3i and negative 3i. That's a positive 45i minus a 9i squared. You take a look, 45i and negative 4i, 45i, they cancel. You know, you're left with 225. You have minus 9i squared. i squared is negative 1, so negative 9 times negative 1 is a positive 9. Add them together and you get 334. Now see, I find that cool. What happened was we have this weird expression, 15 plus 3i times 15 minus 3i, you know, complex numbers, real, imaginary. You multiply it by its conjugate, boom, you get a real number. Uh, that's really cool. You multiply an imaginary number, a complex number, by its conjugate, it becomes real. Let's look at one more. 9 minus 7i times 9 plus 7i. Now, what's going to happen is try and find the pattern. Try and find the shortcut. 
related to something we know. You want to do the whole process the whole time, you're going to be kind of wasting some time. You know, you're going to do 9 times 9. You're going to do 9 times 7i. You're going to get 81 plus 63i. That's easy. It's just distributing. Then you're going to do the same thing. Negative 7i times 9. Negative 7i times 7i. You're going to get negative 63i. You're going to get negative 49i squared. You know, I mean, these are conjugates of each other. And so what's going to happen is the imaginary number, the middle terms, are going to cancel. Always. If you multiply a number by its conjugate, even if it's a complex one, I'm just going to, what's going to happen is the middle terms are always going to cancel. And you're left with a squared minus b squared. Now, this is interesting. Because we just got done with factoring, correct? If you were to, this is the difference of squares. A squared minus B squared factors into A plus B, A minus B. So we're applying that concept when we're dealing with complex conjugates for it. And so what happens is you're always going to have the middle terms cancel. And so you can try and look for a shortcut if you want. You're always going to have the first term squared. You're always going to be subtracting the second term squared which is negative 49, you know, 49 i squared. i squared is negative 1, so you're subtracting. You have 49 i squared becomes a positive 49. And so that becomes 130. So if you want to distribute like we did in the first example every time and then see, oh, hey, the middle one cancels, even when you're dealing with conjugates, okay. But if you want to see the shortcut, a squared minus b squared square the 9 minus 7i squared. You get 81 minus 49i squared, which is negative 1. So 49, negative 49, negative 1 is a positive 49. You're going to get 130. Now, this only works for conjugates. The middle term cancels. If they're not conjugates, you just combine like we did in the previous video.